When the grid dies and the cold moves in, fire won't save you. The smoke gives you away, the light attracts problems, and the wood runs out. But your body, your body is a furnace that runs on spite and trash. Here's how to keep it burning. Let me show you how to survive the cold using nothing but physics, garbage, and the stubborn refusal to freeze to death in a world that doesn't care. Here's the thing nobody tells you. You're already a 100-watt biological heater. Your metabolism is burning calories right now, turning food into motion, thought, and most importantly, warmth. The problem, the cold is a thief. It steals that heat in three brutal ways. Conduction, you sit on frozen ground and the earth drinks your warmth like a vampire. Convection, wind rips across your skin, peeling away heat faster than you can make it. And radiation, your body just bleeds infrared energy into the void, invisible but deadly. Your job isn't to make fire, it's to stop the bleeding. Method one, turn your clothes into a sleeping bag you can walk in. Layers aren't just fashion advice from a dead hiker's journal, they're physics. Start with the base layer that wicks moisture. Wet skin is a death sentence. Water conducts heat 25 times faster than air. Wool or synthetics. Cotton kills. Next, the insulation layer. Fleece, gown, crumpled up newspaper, dry leaves, literal garbage, anything that traps dead air. Air is one of the best insulators on the planet, but only if it's still. Moving air is convection. Convection is the enemy. Top it off with a windproof shell. Trash bags work. Tarps work. That old poncho you found in a gas station dumpster? Congratulations, you're now weatherproof. But here's the trick nobody does. Stuff your jacket with insulation. Crumple up dry grass, shredded paper, or foam from a torn up seat cushion and cram it between your layers. You're not trying to look good, you're trying to not die looking stupid. And for the love of all things warm, cover your head. You don't lose 90% of your heat through your head, that's a myth, but your head is highly vascularized. Lose heat there and your brain starts making bad calls, like taking off your jacket because you feel hot. That's hypothermia talking. Don't listen. Method two, the debris hut. Nature's sleeping bag made of trash. No tent, no sleeping bag, no problem. Find a long branch, your ridge pole, prop one end on a tree or a rock, about waist high. Now, pile smaller branches along both sides like ribs on a spine. You're making a skeleton. Now comes the magic. Bury it. Leaves, pine needles, grass, moss, anything organic and dry. Pile it on thick, at least two feet deep. This isn't a roof, it's insulation. The more, the better. You want it so thick you can barely see the frame. Crawl inside. It's tight. It's claustrophobic. It smells like decomposing forest floor. Perfect! That means it's small enough that your body heat will actually warm the space. A debris hut done right can keep you alive in sub-zero temps, no fire needed. Pro tip, line the inside floor with more debris. Don't lie directly on the ground unless you want conduction to suck the life out of you like a frozen leech. Method 3. The Mylar Burrito. Reflect your heat back like a sad, crinkly mirror. You know those shiny emergency blankets that come in every cheap survival kit? The ones that look like oversized candy wrappers? Those aren't gimmicks, they're radiant heat reflectors, and they work. Your body radiates infrared heat constantly. Normally, that heat just vanishes. But wrap yourself in mylar and suddenly that heat bounces back at you. It's like being inside a thermos. But here's how you use it right. Don't just drape it over yourself like a cape. The wind will shred it. Instead, layer it between blankets or inside your jacket. Use it as a ground sheet to block conduction. Tape it to the walls of your shelter to turn the whole thing into a low-budget sauna. If you don't have mylar, aluminum foil works. So does reflective bubble wrap from a hardware store. Hell, even a car sunshade flipped shiny side in will do the job. Science is just expensive trash that works. Remember, the cold is a thief, but you own the furnace. Don't just survive, outlast it. Keep it burning. All right, let's keep this going. You're cold, you're out of options, so listen up. Method four, the water bottle radiator. This is bootleg central heating at its finest. No heater? You're gonna make one. If you have access to any heat source at all, a stove, sunlight, even a car that was running an hour ago, you can pull this off. Find a durable bottle, plastic or metal, 
and fill it with hot water. Not boiling, you're not trying to cook yourself. Now wrap that bottle in a sock or a shirt, anything to keep it from burning you, and tuck it into your sleeping bag, right up against your core. Boom, you just built a portable radiator. And here's the kicker, that water holds heat for hours, way longer than you'd think. And when it finally cools down, you've got drinking water, two birds, one bottle. No hot water source? Fine, use your own body. Fill a bottle with whatever water you have and tuck it against your stomach or in an armpit. Let your core body heat warm it up slowly. Once it's warm, move it down to your feet. You're now a human-powered heat pump, cycling warmth to your extremities without burning a single extra calorie. It's a closed-loop system powered by you. Let's move on. Method 5. The Cardboard Cocoon. Don't laugh. Cardboard is absolute magic. It's everywhere, and it's full of tiny trapped air pockets. That's the secret to insulation. Flatten out some boxes. Layer them on the ground under you to stop the cold from seeping into your bones. That's blocking conduction. Tape them over windows to kill drafts. You can even wear it. Seriously, shove it under your jacket like you're wearing medieval armor. Yeah, you look ridiculous, but you'll be warm. If you're stuck in a car, this is a game changer. Line the entire interior with flattened boxes. Cover the windows. You're building a little cardboard cave inside your vehicle. It's ugly as sin, but it traps your body heat and blocks the wind like a fortress. In any city, cardboard is the duct tape of survival. It's everywhere. Use it. Method 6. The Huddle. This one's primal. If you are with other people, you get close. I don't care if it's awkward, I don't care if you just met them, the cold does not care about your personal space. Huddle up, back to back, side by side, share blankets, share sleeping bags. It's not just a nice idea, it's biology. Two people in one sleeping bag will stay warmer than two people in separate bags. Animals know this, penguins do it, wolves do it, you are not above it. And if you're alone, fetal position, knees to your chest, arms wrapped around them. You're minimizing your surface area. Less surface area means less heat escaping into the void. And if you have a dog, congratulations! You're sleeping with a 101 degree furnace that has its own fur coat. Use it. Now, you might be asking why any of this works better than just making a fire. Fire is great, but fire is fragile. It needs fuel, it needs oxygen, it needs to be dry. In a storm, in the wet, fire is a luxury. Your body, on the other hand, your body is a biochemical furnace that runs on fat, carbs, and pure spite. You just have to feed it, hydrate it, and most importantly, insulate it. The secret to survival isn't about making more heat. You're already a heat factory. The secret is stopping that heat from escaping. You're plugging the leaks. So the night drags on. The cold presses in, but you're not just shivering and hoping. You are layered, you are insulated, you are huddled. Your core temperature holds, your brain still works. No matches, no problem. You're surviving on physics, trash, and the stubborn refusal to freeze. If you wake up in the morning, you didn't get lucky, you won.